Hello, my name is Bob Marzano uh, from Empower Learning. Uh, and this recording is the third in a series that we're doing on impediments to uh, equity uh, in K-12 education. Um, and our basic message is that um, uh, K-12 schools are not as equitable as they could be. And of course, that's a very complex problem. Uh, and there are probably many parts to the solution, but we'd like to offer you some very straightforward ones uh, in this series. We believe that competency-based education, uh, when mixed with uh, the right learning management system, uh, can generate um, a greater access to equity uh, for all students. Uh, and of course, we're talking, we're going to be using examples from uh, the Empower Learning, uh, learning management system, uh, uh, and uh, kind of our particular version of what competency-based education might look like. Now, how do we find equity? We're defining it in a very you know, broad sense. Um, uh, equity is the quality of being fair and impartial to all students. Uh, students for whom the, the um, system is not uh, meeting their needs because it's going too quickly for them, and the students for whom the system is not meeting their needs because it's not going quickly enough for them in terms of, of working through content. Now, the, uh, this barrier uh, that we're focusing on in this recording is the fact that in the traditional system, students uh, basically have to go to a brick and mortar building. And that's the way it's been ever since uh, uh, K-12 education in this country was you know, formalized. Um, the, uh, and you say, well, what other options are there? Well, there weren't many options up till the last couple decades, um, and actually maybe the last 10 years have really increased our options uh, as educators and as learners uh, and as parents um, in terms of uh, uh, ensuring equity for all, all, all students uh, within our, our education system. Um, uh, so just, just think about it for a second. Uh, even though it sounds like a given, well, of, of course you have to go to a brick and mortar building. Um, uh, and I'm sure you're guessing that, you know, what we'll present is you don't have to do that, you know, given what we know about schooling now and giving the tools that we have, such as Empower. Um, uh, but just, just just play with it for a second. Uh, if, you, if you go to a brick and mortar uh, building, uh, you're limited in terms of your exposure to different teachers. I mean, just think about it. Uh, high school, there's going to be a teacher you go to for Algebra 1. And, you know, same thing with uh, reading in third grade. There's going to be a teacher that you will have um, uh, that will help you master the skills uh, necessary for reading or Algebra one or, or, or whatever it is. And that sounds like a given. Um, uh, and sometimes that works very well, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, that a particular student might resonate with one teacher, uh, but not with another teacher. And believe it or not, that's an impediment to learning. That really is. The personality, uh, person, the lack of personality meshing um, or correlation uh, really gets in the way of, of you know, the learner and also also, also the teacher. Um, I, the, uh, another impediment, uh, you know, to going to a brick and mortar building is that um, uh, students only have, you know, an opportunity for six hours a day, if you will, six and a half hours a day, five days a week to demonstrate, to learn, you know, and then to demonstrate what they know. Um, uh, now, that's a good amount of time, uh, you know, in a week, but still, uh, you know, why not have a system that allows students to asynchronously learn content uh, and demonstrate what they know? Um, the, uh, 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 another implement uh, is that uh, in a brick-and-mortar system, you're, you're limited in terms of your access to uh, instruction that's not, uh, you know, the typical in classroom instruction. Um, you know, there are many styles to learning, we know, and there are many ways of inputting new information uh, to, to students. So how, how, can, how can those, uh, uh, those limitations be overcome, given the use of competency-based education uh, and the use of the right learning management system? Well, competency-based education has some built-in functions that get at all those limitations. Uh, the uh, one is that the content within a competency-based system is laid out for students 
to see not just at a particular grade level, you know, but all the way up through the grades. Now, this is a screenshot from Empower Learning, um, and uh, this is called our target browser. And targets are specific goals, if you will, instructional goals uh, in a given uh, subject area. Uh, and this happens to be mathematics, and you can see if you look at the uh, rows there in the screen, you've got algebra, you've got functions, you've got functions part two, you've got geometry, uh, and those are topics that uh, actually have content that go up through the grade levels. So you can see at the multi, the bar on above the, those uh, those uh, turquoise uh, turquoise uh, uh, rows, <coughs> it shows different grade levels here. Um, the, now we're only looking at grades 10 and 11. Those are the check boxes there. But you can actually see this uh, listing of targets. Uh, all the way down, you know, to grade uh, one, you know, first grade, or even, uh, uh, you know, prior to that, uh, pre-K. Um, and uh, if we had all of the uh, multicolored boxes uh, checked there, so a student can see uh, what's expected in a given area, like functions, you know, all the way up through the grades. And maybe that wouldn't start, that particular content wouldn't start until maybe grade five or six. Um, but anyway, it's visible to the student. They know right from the beginning what's, um, what's expected of them. Uh, now, the, um, uh, uh, another piece that within the Empower System we recommend highly uh, is that each of these topics is accompanied by what we call a proficiency scale, a scale which details what's expected uh, from students at that topic and at that grade level. Uh, and they're built right into the system. So here's uh, a part of the uh, common proficiency scale that we use, where the 3.0 is actually the target. That's what we're shooting for in terms of student understanding. And that's listed right there for the student. Uh, the um, uh, 2.0 is uh, easier content, but content that's necessary to master at the th uh, if you're going to master the 3.0 content. And the 4.0 content would be demonstration that the student actually goes above and beyond what the target is. Now, this particular proficiency scale, you know, we've used for years. Um, I personally have used this scale since 1995. So that's a long time, 25 years now. Uh, and here's the basic uh, framework for this scale. Here's a topic. This happens to be science. I believe this is the eighth grade level. It's on uh, atmospheric processes in the water cycle. And you can see the target goal, you know, is a certain understanding uh, of the water cycle and the effects of temperature and pressure in different layers of the atmosphere. Simpler content would in involve um, the, uh, what, what, what would involve the, um, um, uh, basic terminology and basic facts, and then going above and beyond would be the ability to, you know, to, uh, to perform a more complex task, in this case to describe and defend what might occur to climatic patterns in specific locations, giving a, a dramatic change in one specific process, uh, one, excuse, one specific process of the water cycle. So our framework here, very straightforward, it's got three as the target, uh, uh, that's filled in with content, uh, two is simpler content that's filled in uh, in the proficiency scale. Uh, one and zero are not new content. One represents students have a partial understanding uh, with some help, and zero would mean even with help, the student doesn't demonstrate an understanding. And four is the advanced content. So again, the scale really only has three layers of content, but actually five levels of performance uh, on, the, on those scales. Now imagine if every one of these, you know, the, these uh, targets, these, these uh, uh, turquoise boxes, uh, the, uh, uh, has a proficiency scale attached to it, and they do. Um, in a competency-based system, that would be the case. Uh, and in power, they're built right in. Uh, and along with uh, a description of the content students are supposed to master, uh, also imagine that each level of the proficiency scale was accompanied by uh, information that students could access virtually. Uh, we actually call them playlists. And, uh, and a playlist might be um, a uh, written description of the content or explanation of the content. It might be a video or a screencast made by the teacher explaining the content. Uh, it might be uh, a video that was taken, a recording that was taken from a, um, 
a, a, a explanation of content from resources like the Khan Academy, et cetera, et cetera. You know, there are many different types of ways that student that the content can be explained and exemplified uh, to students. Now, the powerful piece here that um, gets at the uh, barrier of a brick and mortar building is that if you're using an LMS like this uh, uh, and students have access to it at home, which means they have, you know, uh, you know they have a tablet or they have a computer at home, uh, and what we believe that that should be standard in K-12 education. And I know we're getting close to it in K-12 education. It's still not there, but uh, it should be. And in a lot of places, it already is. Students can access this content at any time. Their instruction doesn't have to be, you know, from Friday, Monday through Friday in a six and a half hour period, six and a half hour period of time. Um, also, they can experience um, uh, multiple teachers, if you will. Remember I mentioned the playlists. Well, the playlists will, will be the presentation of knowledge uh, that, um, and the examples you know, of what students are uh, trying to learn. And also um, activities that students are engaged in that demonstrate that they know uh, the content. Uh, now, uh, if a student is just relegated to a brick and mortar building and they have one teacher for algebra one, uh, then that teacher, as good as he or she may be, or that's the only source of the information. Uh, granted, the teacher can use some recordings, et cetera, et cetera, but still it's coming, uh, the kind of, all that is you know, funneled through the uh, teacher. Um, in a constant-based system, using LMS like Empower, uh, multiple teachers can present the content to students. Um, multiple teachers could add to uh, the information that students receive uh, in these playlists. So teachers share these playlists. And if there are two teachers teaching Algebra 1, you know, they can cross-pollinate each other's playlists. Uh, and if you can imagine a school doing this over time, they would gradually, for each one of these targets, remember each one of these you know, has a proficiency scale, they would accrue multiple uh, m multiple virtual presentations of content uh, to students. Um, and within a true competency-based system, actually, instead of the Algebra 1, there only being one Algebra 1 teacher uh, to um, uh, uh, judge a student's uh, competence, that can be shared across all the Algebra 1 teachers in a building. So now it's more of a village of Algebra One teachers who are having input into what students do and also making judgments about what areas, uh, strengths and weaknesses on specific uh, topics. Now that, that just breaks the entire paradigm, it really does. Um, and, uh, and you can probably surmise here <clears throat> that uh, actually technically a student would never have to go to a brick and mortar building to demonstrate, to learn about specific content uh, in a specific subject area and to demonstrate their knowledge and skill at that specific um, uh, subject and the specific uh, targets there. Um, uh, that's the future, and it's not the future, it's happening right now uh, in schools across the country. Um, now, I'm not saying that that's, that's the best form of education where students never go to a brick and mortar building. On the contrary, going to the brick and mortar building is good. There's many social aspects of learning that uh, they're not going to get at home that they will get, you know, well, they being the students, um, you know, by going to school. But imagine uh, if uh, we had now had the freedom that when students attended physically, it wasn't all just the content. They could get that asynchronously. We could attend to other things that are perhaps equally important as content to the development of an individual students, higher level thinking skills. Um, social interactions, um, I, you know, learning about themselves, you know, as a person uh, functioning in, in society. Uh, now, I'm making this recording right in the middle of COVID, uh, and you're probably already experiencing this, that many schools across the country have a hybrid approach where students spend some time in a brick and mortar building, other times at home. Some schools, you know, because of COVID, have stopped having, you know, in-person, uh, physical in-person instruction. And so everything is virtual. Um, I personally think that is not going to go away. 
uh, even after we have a vaccine, and you know, God willing, we have one very, very soon, uh, that uh, there will be some students who prefer the hybrid approach. There will be some parents who prefer a hybrid approach. And even if students do you know, want to spend you know, five days a week for six and a half hours of the day in school, uh, they can still, when they're not in school, uh, demonstrate what they know. They can still, when they're not in school, get information about specific topics. Um, so I believe this is the future. I really do. And you know, COVID is uh, a scourge. There's no two ways about it. I mean, you know, it is a plague. Uh, and there's uh, very little good happening out of it, uh, except that we might now, you know, have been forced to look at alternatives for K through 12 education. And let's take the best of what, what we've learned. Um, and uh, competency-based education plus the right LMS uh, opens up possibilities that were never there before. If you're interested in, in power learning, uh, please uh, look, uh, you know, check us out, and uh, we love to explain to you in more depth what Empower can do. Thank you.